The Lord be with you. I welcome you to the way of God. This is Pastor Abraham of Badare bringing you the word of God. I always say that the word of God is the way of God. Today, I am glad to continue uh, the teaching uh, uh, that I uh, started with uh, some time ago. The thinking of an excellent person. The thinking of an excellent person, the, the pattern of thought of an excellent child of God. How do excellent people think? What do they say? What, what type of life do they live? In the previous teaching, I, I was explaining to you that the man Job lived an excellent life, whether at the time of his uh, uh, well-being or at the time of his uh, troubles, he maintained a honest life full of integrity, full of excellence. Now, in chapter 31 of Job, the first four verses, Job said to himself, I will not look or think or live lustfully. I am an excellent child of God. From verse 5 through 8, he said, I am not going to live a life of deceit. I am an excellent child of God. From verse 9 through 12, he said, I am not going to live a life of adultery. I am an excellent child of God. Now, I'm going to challenge you by the reason of the word of God, by the examples that, that those who have lived here before us have set. If Job as a human being could say those things and could live like that, you and I can do the same because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now, let me take you further. Apart from those three decisions that he made, there were others that he made. And I want to share it with you so you know how an excellent child of God thinks. And you want to put yourself in that realm of excellence. From verse 13 through 15, Job uh, continued to say, If I have despised the, the, the cause of my male or female servant when they complained against me, what then shall I do when God rises up, when he punishes? How shall I answer him? Did not he who made me in the womb make them did not the same one fashion us in the womb this is to say i am not going to treat anyone as a slave this is the mindset of an excellent man i am not going to treat with disdain the complaints of those who are under me yes I am the boss. Yes, I am the man. Yes, I am the, uh, the uh, official that is above some people. Yes, a lot of people work for me or work with me. Yes, my rank is, uh, is uh, higher than uh, uh, that of uh, some other people, but I will not cheat them. I will not dishonor their complaint. I will listen to their complaint. I will ensure that uh, they are all right. I will treat them right. I will pay them their wages. I will do something about their complaints. Because if I don't do something, if I discard their complaints, Job was telling himself, isn't it the same God? that made both of us? Isn't it the same God that made the, 
the, the Jew and the, and the Greek? Isn't it the same God that made the white and the black? Isn't it the same God that made the, the, the male and the female? Isn't it the same God that made the boss and the subordinate? Isn't it the same God that made all of us? If I know it is the same God, if I, if I think that way, I will not mistreat the people who work for me. I will not mistreat the people uh, uh, that, that I, I make more money above them. Just because I make more money, that means, uh, uh, does that give me the, uh, the audacity to begin to mistreat others, to begin to disrespect others, to begin to look down on others. An excellent man was thinking this way and was talking this way and said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to enslave people. I am not going to look down on people just because I have a degree that they don't have or I have a position that they don't have or I have extra money in my pocket and they don't have extra money. That's not how I'm going to look at anybody. I will see everybody as God's image. I will see everybody as people who were created by God as I was created by God. The same color of blood runs in me as it runs in them. I was formed in my mother's womb as they were formed in their mother's womb. They are God's creations as I am a, 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 a creation of God. This is how an excellent person thinks. And I'd like you to begin to think this way using the scriptures. We've seen someone in the scriptures who is thinking that I am equal with everybody regardless of my status, regardless of my stature, regardless of my position, regardless of my financial uh, 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 realm or my class. I am one and the same with everybody. This way I will not cheat people. I believe this is an excellent decision for anyone to make. This is an excellent way way of thinking and this is how I am encouraging you to begin to think excellently think as a child of God excellently now I'll take you to another one as we read further in the scriptures Job chapter 31 and, and let's now read from verse 16 all the way to 23 now this is going to be talking about how to treat the defenseless how does uh, a, a, a christian how does a child of god treat a defenseless person as a as a child of god you must think excellently and this is the this is the excellent way that a child of god will think concerning the defenseless a child of god thinks that I will not engage in lustfulness, I will not engage in deceitfulness, I will not engage in adulterous uh, relationships, and I am not going to look down on, on anyone that is below me because of one reason or the other. Another way, another way of thinking excellently is that I am not going to disrespect the defenseless. I am not going to leave people defenseless. I will defend them. The fatherless, the widow, the orphans, I will defend them. Those who cannot uh, defend their own cause. If I have the chance, if I have the opportunity, I will defend them. That is the way of thinking for an excellent person who claims to be a child of God. Now, let me read the scriptures to you so you can affirm what I am saying. Job chapter number uh, 31 verse 16 all the way to 23. This is what Job says. An excellent man indeed. He says, If I have kept the poor from their desire or caused the eyes of the widow to fail or eaten my muscle by myself if I it's all by myself I walk for me eat for me everything is just for me I live for me 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 an excellent person doesn't think me 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 an excellent person allows others to share of what they have they think of others 
He said, if I have done all, all of that, if I, am, if I am selfish, I eat only, I eat my food only by myself, so that the fatherless could not eat of it, whoa. He said, that's not my life. As a matter of fact, verse, verse 18, this is my life. From my youth, I have reared the, the, the fatherless. I've reared them. I've taken care of them as, as if I were their father. And, f and from my mother's womb, I guided the widow. If I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing, that means I share my clothing. I go to my closet. I look at the clothes that I can share. I share it. I give it to others. So I'm not the only ones who have clothes on my back. I'm not the only one who should be warm this uh, uh, winter season. Or any poor man without covering. If his heart has not blessed me or if he was not warmed with the fleas of my sheep. If I have uh, raised my hand against the fatherless. When I saw I heard help in the gate. Then let my arm fall off of my shoulder I think that's serious this man is saying if I've been dealing wickedly with the poor if I don't remember to to give some clothes out to give some shoes out to give some food out if I don't remember to take care of the poor let my sh my, my my arm fall off of my shoulder that's a serious Christian that's a person who really really wants to do the will of God he says, let my arm be torn from the socket. For destruction from God is a terror to me. I can't afford to be destroyed by God. That's what he's saying. And because of his magnificence, I cannot endure. I can't stand before God and say I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and see the poor continue to wallow in poverty and do nothing. This is how an excellent man is thinking. I can't see a fatherless person and do nothing. Whatever is within my power, I want to do it. This is how an excellent child of God is thinking. Let me ask you, how are you thinking? How are you dealing with the less privilege around you? What have you given out lately from the abundance of what God has given to you? From the clothes in your closet that is filled up, from the shoes in, 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 in the rack. Have you, have you thought of giving some out? Yeah. Have you thought of donating some hours, some money, some... Have you thought of sacrificing some of what the Lord has given to you? This is necessary. This is true religion. This is true Christianity. This is how an excellent person, man or woman, ought to be thinking and living. If Job could do it, you can do it. I can do it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I'm encouraging you today to learn from the Word of God and live by the Word of God. Let these words not just be written there and remain letters in the book. Let the life of the words come into us and become lived through us. You know, when you extend your hand out to a poor person from the bottom of their heart, they will bless you. They will pray for you. And listen, I have learned you will never lack any good thing just because you released some of what you had to someone who doesn't have any you're not gonna lack anything the Lord our God is a provider the um, um, uh, uh, Paul will pray for the Philippians he would say because you've done this because you have provided for the gospel because you have re remembered uh, other churches that have none and you have provided for their needs listen this is what I'm gonna tell you this is my prayer for you my God will provide for your needs according to his riches in glory he will provide 
for your needs according to your, his riches in glory. That is to say that because you give, you will only get more provision. Because you extend, God will only extend you. Because you provide for others, God will only provide for you the more. You cannot lack any good thing. David would say, I have been young, but right now I'm getting old. But there is something that remains constant. What is it? It is that I have never seen the son of the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither their children beg for bread. If you live according to the word of God, sharing from what you have, you cannot be forsaken and you cannot beg for bread. This is a principle of the Lord Most High. It is a standard that He has set. He will not change it. So try the Lord by giving from what you have. Do not be stingy. Do not withhold. Is there anything that you have, that I have, that we have not been given? Really? What do you have that you have not been given? What have I that I, I, I didn't receive? That's how Paul will teach his people. Everything you've got, you received it. So, if you would allow somebody to receive something from you, God would allow you to have more to receive. The Bible says it is uh, uh, blessed, more blessed, more blessed to, to, to give than to receive. So, as you are giving, there is more blessings coming your way. This is the mindset of an excellent child of God. Someone who is living less than an excellent life would say, uh, I worked hard for this. I'm not going to share it with anybody. I worked hard for this. This is mine. This is me. This is... Nah. An excellent child of God said, freely I receive, freely I will give. An excellent child of God said, my God will provide for me according to his riches in glory. An excellent child of God would say, there is nothing I have that I actually did not receive. If I received it, I can share it. If I received it, I can give it. If I received it, somebody else can receive it. The, the thinking of an excellent child of God. I'm going to share Maybe one more with you today. An excellent child of God says to himself or herself, I will not engage in false worship. I will worship only the Lord my God. I will not worship anybody. I will not worship anything that is created. Now, how, how did Job put this? From verse 24 to 28. These are the words of Job. And I'd like you to take it to heart. An excellent person says to himself, says to herself, I will not engage in false worship. Verse 24 and on. Job said, If I have made gold my hope, or said to find gold, you are my confidence. If I, if I can't live without those material things, if I'm going to uh, cause a, 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 a fit, if, if uh, somebody talks about my material things, if I'm going to die because I lost my material things, if I've got to have it, I can't live without it. That's a sense of worshiping it. The only one we cannot live without ought to be God. Ought to be the one who died for us. The only one we ought to worship is the Lord who died for us. So Job was telling himself, if I make gold, if I make material things my, my source of confidence, he says, I'm in trouble. He says, if I have rejoiced because uh, my wealth has become great, and because my hand has gained much, if that's where my confidence is, if that's, that's where I think my life is, if, if that's what I think my source of existence is, he said, 
I, I'm losing it. He says, if I have observed the sun uh, uh, when it shines or, or, or the moon move, moving in brightness so that my heart has been uh, secretly enticed and my mouth has kissed my hand, this also would be an iniquity deserving of judgment for I would have denied God who is above. If I worship my gold and silver, if I worship my money, if I worship uh, my wife, I worship yeah, you worship your husband, you worship your your materials, your car, because it's a, it's a hot car. You worship the things that are created. Job said, this in itself is an iniquity before God, and it is worthy of punishment. He said, I can't do that. He said, by doing that, I'm denying God. So, let me ask you, what, what is the place of your jewelry in your heart versus God? What is the place of the Lord in your heart versus your car? What is the place of your position and your degree versus the place of the Lord in your heart? Every Everything in life has its own place. Is God number one? Would you worship him and prefer him over and above things? Job said in his excellent thinking, if I prefer things than God, it means I, I am denying God. I am worshiping a false God. The only true God is the Lord Jesus who died for me. I will not deny him. I'll give up anything that he's asking me to give up. I'll give up any material that he's asking me to give up. Those materials didn't make me. They're not the ones who make me beautiful. I was fearfully and wonderfully made from the, from the womb of my mother. Handsomely made. So they're not the things that add value to me. They don't add value to me. They're not my God. Materials are not my God. This is the thinking of an excellent person. Money is not my God. This is the thinking of an excellent person. I will not worship the, those things. I will not worship them. I met them here on earth. I'm going to leave them here on earth when I'm gone. So why don't I focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Why don't I look up unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith? Why don't I seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and everything else? Gold and silver, house and car, uh, and all those other things that I may consider uh, uh, nice and necessary, they will be added unto me. This is the word of the Lord that I'm sharing with you how an excellent child of God thinks. I'm going to stop here for today because of our time, but I pray that the blessings of these words will be yours in the name of Jesus. Think excellently because you are an excellent child of God.